Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Storybook Cottage. We are very much still in the process of moving and if you're new to the channel, just a little bit of background. I am moving out of my fairy tale house of 32 years and into this Storybook Cottage and I'm bringing you guys along with the decorating, the re-landscaping, the moving out, the decision-making process, everything that is involved in moving from the fairy tale house to the storybook cottage. And it's been so much fun, very frustrating, <laughs> uh, very nerve-wracking, but we're having a good time, aren't we, Stuart? We are, and welcome everybody And well. yeah, we have yeah, so many new subscribers. So many. Thank you guys. Yes, thank you for coming along for the ride. If you have not subscribed, please please do so. If you are subscribed, please make sure that you hit the like button and turn on notifications. And right now, Stuart, behind you, we have a great big trailer uh, with some guys who are getting ready to unload some stuff. But I digress. Today, it's all about the infrastructure for the outside. You guys knew I couldn't be inside for too long before I would have to start thinking about this blank slate of a garden. So we've got lots in store for you today. Well, sometimes people have regular moving vans and sometimes they have friends who have horse trailers, especially in Oklahoma, that help you move a bunch of things. Fortunately, we've been very, very lucky that we didn't have to move all at one time. We have been able to do it over a course of weeks and that has made it easier. Though I will say the downside of that is it also is kind of like ripping a Band-Aid off slowly. Uh, and every time I do anything in the fairy tale house I think oh this is the last time I'm going to be doing this or that but we've got a lot to look forward to in the future so I can't stay t I can't stay sad for too long beginning with thinking about this landscape so it's all about doing the infrastructure first which to me means trees and as you can see this is very much a blank slate and it's time for me to think about incorporating um, some investment trees and a little bit of privacy as I'm up here on this hill or as the neighborhood calls it, as the historic preservationists call it, a rolling terrace. And I've got to keep that rolling terrace intact as I do my landscaping. Now you'll notice up and down the street that there are some, well, a number of trees right along the street itself, in between the sidewalk. This is an extremely walkable neighborhood, which is one of the things I love about it, between this sidewalk and the street. And then there is a sidewalk perpendicular to the traveling sidewalk that goes to the street itself. And that is where I'm gonna be placing my first two trees. Stuart, let's come down here. Now, one of the things I am doing is I am replacing some trees that had been here in the past. I don't know what they were. I don't know anything about the history, but you can see that there is a stump here. Maybe these trees succumbed to Dutch elm disease, or maybe one of the many ice storms or wind storms that we have here in Oklahoma. I really don't know, but I want to finish this wonderful line of trees. And I want to continue that effect of a tree-lined street and an allay, a series of trees in line in front of my house. And as importantly, because I think it looks very truncated here and very cut off, and I want it to continue to the street. So the first trees that I'm going to have installed, hopefully later this week, are two Nuttle Oaks. Now you may recall, if you've been a longtime viewer, that I have a Nuttle Oak along my drive 
on the southeast corner of where my property sits in my driveway, I have a nuttle oak there. Uh, it was named after the famous, I believe he was a botanist or explorer, Thomas Nuttall. If I can find out some information, I'll let you know. But it's a wonderful, wonderful tree that is drought tolerant, can also handle wet soils. I have to have an oak tree because, of course, I had my magnificent uh, Schumard oak at the fairy tale house. So I want two to flank either side of this sidewalk and also be kind of a natural portal up to the cottage itself. And you can see the door has blown open. So it's very, it'll be very welcoming. So I'm gonna do that here. The other thing that this is going to do, it's a triple play. It's gonna give me a sense of privacy. I will keep them highly limbed up so I'll never feel as if it's claustrophobic and overgrown. Like my other ones, I will keep them beautifully pruned and limbed up so you feel like you're walking under a portal as they mature. It will finish this allay and it will very beautifully frame my house. Plus, it will give some shade. Now, down here, it's time that I start practicing what I preach. As I said, these trees are drought tolerant. So like everything that we plant in Oklahoma, drought and a lack of moisture is a consideration. So in addition to these being drought tolerant, this area right here, this has a combination of, a, I believe it's Bermuda, maybe some zoysia grass. And this is going to have to be, it's going to need some good grooming. There are some divots in here. It looks like some kind of vehicle drove over this corner. I obviously have to be careful about utilities. Um, but this, this grassy area, it's going to be taken care of. We're going to top dress it. We're going to kill out any weeds that are overwintering. But this area is not going to be irrigated. So I'm going to have to be really mindful about keeping these trees watered while they are in development and getting established. Initially, we'll probably put some of those ugly looking gator bags on them, which are water holders, water uh, vestibules or vessels to keep it moist right at the roots as it's setting down what are pretty deep tap roots. So nuttle oaks, one of the reasons that we think of them as an enduring tree and an investment tree is because oak trees put down deep roots and broad roots. So I think these are going to be maybe six, seven feet tall. I'm not sure exactly what we found, but I think they're gonna be beautiful here. And immediately, if you can visualize them being here, immediately you will feel as if I have a little bit more privacy and also something of a windbreak. Because one thing I've discovered about this corner is it's pretty breezy, isn't it, Stuart? I breeze through the stop sign. Yeah, just breeze through the stop sign. So it is, it is, uh, <laughs> he breezed through the stop sign, um, which is not a good thing because this neighborhood is such a youthful, vibrant, young neighborhood, lots of kiddos playing. So that is, that is my first pair of sentinel trees that I will plant right on either side of the walkway. And Stuart, let's make sure that we plant some information about nuttle oaks. They are appropriate for Oklahoma. I have, have a history with them, a very successful history in growing them. So I think they will be a very good addition to this house. Now, the other, th the other thing, um, so how, how long over the years have I griped about all the squirrels? Forever. Okay, but then <laughs> you only miss something when it's gone. So yes. I'm not gonna have a lot of squirrels here because I don't have really many trees. So the nuttall oaks will bring me some of those squirrels, but they'll be far away from the house. I knew you secretly liked them. I secretly liked them. That's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> I will create great big wells around the tree itself that I will keep mulched and very, very tidy. And then I'll just keep this groomed. So this grass may go dormant in the summertime. Definitely it's gone dormant in the winter time. I will not overseed it with rye or anything like that because I want it to be an extension of this wonderful allay of trees and this wonderful passage down my street. So 
it will look exactly, um, hopefully very well groomed, but it will look very similar to the other streets on this tree because when these neighborhoods were first found, it was all about differences in the home styles, but consistency in the way the topography was. So let's go to our next set of trees. Stuart, you're laughing. I'm at laughing because you said all the streets on this tree. Oh, all the streets on this tree? <laughs> I think it's what it was. Okay, okay, all of the... Um, you said it was confidence, so I just like, I didn't I even sounded confident. You sounded well, like there that, you was go. It. that was All it. the houses on this street <laughs> will be different, but all of the topography and the placement of the trees will be very similar. Did I say it right Perfect. that time? I, it didn't even make me laugh I that have, time. I have, <laughs> I have uh, verbal dyslexia, what can oh, I man. say? So I think it will be very, very pretty. And you can see my little sign, Mesta Park. This is my historic neighborhood that was founded in 1902. Let's go to the next tree that will make an appearance. but somebody asked me what kind of shelf liner I'm using um, and I am just using this Gloman. It is kind of ridged, it's non-slip. I'm getting it in the 12 inch and then you can get it in various, uh, various lengths depending on how much you need. But I'm putting this stuff down practically everywhere. It's pretty easy, it doesn't stick or whatever and it's, you can wipe it, it's washable. So for whomever, those of you who asked, I am using this kind of, of ridge, washable uh, shelf liner, and we will make sure to give you a link. Well, this is officially, other than lots of planning that I assured you John has already been done, this is the first real um, segment that we're doing about my new garden. And I'm starting with what I consider to be this property's infrastructure, some of the trees that are already on site. And this is our this is our first initial step. So let me introduce a buddy of mine. This is John Johnson. Hi. John, we were trying to calculate how long ago we 30 something years. Yeah, 30 something years. <laughs> so something. so that's how long he has helped me take care of my massive sweet oak tree that I'm sad to leave. Mm -hmm. um, he has helped me out of God knows how many ice storms, <laughs> wind storms. Um, and like I say, I have worked with these guys for so many years, so I trust you implicitly. But the other reason is that when there is a disaster, which is not infrequent in Oklahoma, you guys are some of the first to call me, aren't you? Correct. Correct. You're always the top of the list. Always the top. <laughs> You're always the top of the list. <laughs> I like being at the top of anybody's <laughs> list. You got us in your back pocket. Let's talk about what's going on here. Um, I think when you start out, John knows this about me. I'm always pretty conservative. Very. Always taking into account safety first, and then beautification. So in conjunction with my landscape architects I'm working with, you guys know my friend Roger, John, and Kayla, we identified two trees that I know I want to take out right away. Right away. Now, I don't want to offend this hackberry, but this is what you and I sometimes refer to as a trash tree. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> it is serving no real good purpose. It's not very healthy. Um, it could potentially do damage to my fence, and so it's coming down completely. Correct. And because of its proximity to the fence, mm -hmm. it the, you can you can't get a stump grinder in here. No, no, the, the gate and everything. The gate's too narrow. Right. So. So for practical reasons and also cost-effective reasons. Correct. We're not going to yeah, use. Yeah, we'll a just take it down to the here. stump and right. take it. About right yeah, about high somewhere around there. These right now, and these are what kind of cedars are these? Uh, good question. Um, <laughs> Six cedars. They're, yeah, and probably I, I don't, don't think they're all 
Yeah. Oh, no, they're not arborvitaes. They're some kind of cedar, maybe yeah. just common yeah, red yeah, cedars. Yeah, yeah. Like, like red cedars. But these, they may, in my ultimate plan, go. They may stay, but right now they are one element that's giving a little bit of privacy to me. And since the backyard exactly. is my first, or my second priority, my first, my front yard is the first priority, these are going to stay for right now, but they are going to clean out this dead wood. They're going to elevate the canopy a yes, little bit. Raise, raise and I that's another reason to have a tree guy in your pocket because anymore, I don't really have to tell John what to do. He knows instinctively what I like. If there is a decision point, we will uh, collaborate on that. Mm -hmm. But typically, he pretty much knows what I want. So I can shorthand say, clean this tree out, and he knows exactly what I'm talking about. So that's another reason to start nurturing these relationships right now. Trees are coming down, but trees are going in. So this juniper that is, or cedar. No, it's a cedar. Cedar that's like the ones yeah. in, the back, in the back. It's leaning. <laughs> leaning to our pieces. Yeah, the, the entire thing just isn't, it's green and I like that and it's a tree mm. and I like that. But other than that, it's really not doing its job. And so since this entire area is going to be rethought, this tree is coming down and this one you will use a stump grinder Correct. on. Correct. So that I will have easier access to the soil below and re-landscaping all of this. And, and talk a little bit about when the optimal time for, for both tree removal and tree trimming is. Well, tree removal, you can, you can do it any time okay. of year. Any time of year. And we're, we're, at, we're actually in a region here in, here in the United States where, you know, there's a lot of trees you can trim any time of year. Except your fruit bearing trees and your nut bearing trees because it interferes with the product. But your maples and your cottonwoods, your sycamores, there's a lot of sycamores in this in this neighborhood here. You can trim them anytime. Okay. And there's anytime without hurting them. And there's no sap rising right nope. now any anyway. Nope. I would say that for me the optimal time to take down your trees is in the winter because there's not the danger of it crushing any landscape that is right. it, that is fully flushed right. out below. But that's more of an aesthetic decision rather than a horticultural one. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Very good. And right now you don't have anything in your yard, so it doesn't no, really matter. No, no, <laughs> You uh, haven't started yet. No, we are, you know. <laughs> we're at, we're, yes, yeah. yes, you guys are starting. So thank you, my friend, for always having my back. You know I appreciate it. Yeah, I know you do. Thank and you, guys. I appreciate you, too. Thank you. Yes. It's always fun to arrange a new closet, especially when you have just the right accessories and a friend of mine gave me these purse hooks that I can suspend or hang all of my different bags and totes etc from and I had not heard of such a thing but they are great and I will try to find a link because I think you might find them to be really helpful too. Well, I guess it's official that we're really moving, Stuart, because Amazon Prime is starting to drop off, <laughs> starting to drop off packages. Yeah, you can't hide from them long. Uh, so this is the third area where I'm going to install some trees. This is one of the locations that somewhere in this video, either before or after this section, you'll see where we took down one of the trees. There used to be a leaning juniper right here, and I, it hurts my heart every time I take down a tree, but this one really needed to go, both for safety purposes and because I wanted to put something uh, in this area that I think would be a lot more attractive and a lot more beautiful. So this tree was one of two that came down in addition to a gnarly old damaged hackberry in the back. Now there's going to be, again, if you have followed me for any length of time, you know that I love layering. And for me, probably the ceiling layer, the top layer is, is always the trees, i.e. the bones of the garden and what I consider to be its primary and primal to its infrastructure. So at the bottom, at this sidewalk area that leads to this staircase, I'm going to plant two maples, two October glories. 
Now this is a tree that I have used at customers' homes but in clients' homes, but I've not used at mine. They're a brilliant, brilliant uh, tree for Oklahoma. They are drought resistant. All of these trees grow moderately fast, as much as 24 inches a year. And again, I'm gonna have them on this street on the corner, flanking this passage up to the east side of the house. Now, my placement for these is based on a number of different things. I've noticed that on this side of the street, there's lots of beautiful sycamores, but on my side of the street, there's not a lot of trees, or again, they may have been damaged and come down in the past. Instead of planting the sycamores, I'm going to plant these October Glory maples. Now, I always kind of go back and forth between Autumn Blaze and October Glory, but October Glory has a bigger leaf, which I find more attractive, and I, I just like its leaf form a little bit better. These will, depending on which specimens I get, will be more goldish or red. I'm hoping primarily red because I think red and gold here will look beautiful with the caddo on the corner and then the two dark green nettle oaks that lead up to the front door. So this will be my first layer as I as I proceed to landscape this space, adding different layers as we go up. Again, this area, this strip here will not be irrigated, so I'll have to really be mindful of keeping them watered while they get established. But I think they'll be a beautiful addition, providing much needed color, much needed grounding for this corner. They will anchor this corner, but also much needed and much appreciated shade for the hundreds of people who walk by in this very walkable European-like neighborhood. Stuart, I am a tree. Very specifically, I am a caddo maple. <laughs> I am a caddo tree. maple that is uh, one of the trees that I have growing right now at the fairy tale house. It's the one that is right outside my window that I often reference in the fall when it turns gold. It is just like growing sunshine and I absolutely love it and I wanted another one here. Now caddo maples are a sugar maple that are native to parts of the southwest and southwestern Oklahoma and so I know that they can do well here. One thing I know about them is while they are drought tolerant, they do require really good drainage, something that my friend John, the landscape architect, reminded me of as we were planning a lot of these additional trees to place into the landscape. I'm not sure if this is a, is a utility stake or if it is a surveying stake, but whatever it is, definitely when these trees are installed, we're gonna be mindful of all utilities. Right now, I don't have to worry about any irrigation lines and their placement because this area will be irrigated, unlike the street side, street side portion. But there's no irrigation in place that will come in subsequent to our putting in and installing the trees. Now, Stuart's going to show you an amazing picture of Caddo Maples. They are such a beautiful, beautiful tree. Again, they're sugar, sugar maples, so they have that brilliant foliage color in the fall. Mine that I have is mostly golden with some red tinges to it, and it's magnificent. The Nuttle Oaks will turn kind of an orangey red, but it will be a nice contrast, I think, from both directions. So there'll be a green canvas against which the gold can play in this direction, and then there will be a gold canvas against which the green can play from that direction. In either case, I think it will be really beautiful, and it will, most importantly to me, not only give me a sense of enclosure and some privacy, but it will be a little bit of a windbreak, and it will also be a magnificent focal point, I think, for this corner. Don't you, do you agree, Stuart? I think it'll be beautiful. 
So this will make me happy. Again, I will keep it pruned up high and beautifully thinned out so it isn't so subject to wind damage. Now, does it, does it concern me? Because this is on a very exposed corner and as I look down the street, Stuart, if you wanna point down that way, you can see that many, many of these old growth trees like mine at the fairy tale house have experienced and suffered lots of damage from ice storms and wind storms. And again, there's a reason there's not a lot of mature trees on the prairie, but it's also one of the, one of the many reasons that I gravitate to these old historic um, districts. Now, I think it will be fine here. Uh, if you don't try it, you don't know, but I think it will be absolutely beautiful, a wonderful caddo maple, sugar maple, to anchor this corner, which is the southeast corner of my property. Now let's go on to the next area. Well, many, many of you have asked if I am bringing all of my pots with me. And while I'm not bringing all of my pots, I'm bringing a good number of them. Some of these uh, will, I'm not sure where they're gonna go. Some of them will probably go away. But until I begin to orchestrate the composition of the outside, I'm not really sure where they're gonna go. And I don't wanna get rid of them until, um, until I do know, because I want to use as much stuff of what I have without buying something new as I possibly can. Smart. Yeah, in addition, <laughs> yeah, it's always a smart thing. Um, in addition, a lot of these things, particularly the box boxwoods that are in pots, um, they some of those will go into the ground and I will just reconfigure things. Now, probably one of the biggest heartaches for me in leaving the fairy tale house was I'm also leaving behind thousands of tulips that have been planted in that landscape and I won't have them here some this lucky spring. New owner, some lucky new homeowner will <laughs> have them though and I promise you next year I am hoping that this entire corner is a wash in oh, in gorgeous tulips um, and so but I did Stuart what I did is I did plant some in these two large pots so I would have at least representation these are some of those party punch tulips that we talked about from Brex and they are in here I did get them planted late but hopefully they will Hopefully they will cooperate. And I actually have some daffodils in there from Brex. So this is all kind of a mess right now. And again, if, if you are new, go back and look at some of, of the old footage of the very beautiful landscape that we had at the fairy tale house because it might, it might- What a fun thought. It <laughs> might give you faith. Somebody who's just followed us doesn't even really know about the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, about the other st the other the stuff other in the house. magazines and okay, the book. Okay, yeah, go yeah. check it yeah, out, everybody. Go check it out and, and it might buy, be really fun. Yeah, buy a copy of, of my <laughs> book, The Elegant and Edible Garden, where I describe the creation of that garden. And I, I am going to be talking about that book in a number of different locations, Stuart. We might be going to Birmingham. Uh, and visit our friends at Southern Living Plant Collection, which by the way, is gonna be one of the sponsors of re-landscaping this. They've got a new boxwood out that I am just so excited about, better boxwood. You're gonna find out all about that. We might, uh, if we can coordinate it, we'll visit SLPC's nursery, um, some of the places where they grow their magnificent plant collection. Uh, but then I might be doing a speaking engagement there. Um, I'm gonna be doing a podcast soon on NP are and there's we're just kind of we're just going to appear here and there and everywhere Stuart as we sure. as we get a chance but I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a tour of a very very blank slate and but it will be filled as as soon as we can get it filled with lots of magical things and i am just hoping that mother nature is going to be a good companion and hold my hand through this entire process because as i was telling my sister in north carolina yesterday it's always iffy to get a landscape started in oklahoma with our extreme weather both heat 
cold, drought, and sometimes too much water, but we're going to give it a try. So I am happy that you guys will be also likewise holding my hand along with me as we proceed to create this beautiful landscape at the Storybook.